Welcome to the 8-Minute Trump Care Update from uh, the Healthcare MBA at the University of St. Thomas. My name is John McVeigh. In this update, we are curating a range of stakeholder uh, perspectives from across our healthcare um, community about the opportunities and the uh, challenges facing us in the transition from Obamacare to Trump Care. So with us today, we have two of our uh, faculty members from the Healthcare MBA. First, we have uh, Joe White, who teaches accounting finance on the uh, Healthcare MBA and is also formerly a partner at CLA. And we have Ryan Johnson, who teaches healthcare law on our Healthcare MBA and is a partner at Fredrickson. Um, so Joe, let me turn to you and ask the first of the five questions we're asking each of our, our guests each week. Um, everything that's being discussed about healthcare, a lot of topics on the, on the agenda, a lot being covered in the news. What of all of those issues gives you the most hope uh, for yeah. healthcare reform this week? Well, I, I think that there is hope there. Um, in, and I see it in the Paul Ryan uh, proposals related to the healthcare changes. Mm -hmm. and, and so when they do the replace and repeal, I think there's some good things in there. Mm -hmm. um, more patient responsibility for mm -hmm. healthcare. It's going to change things a lot, right? I mean, all of a sudden, pricing is going to affect things and, mm -hmm. and should have an impact of driving down prices. Mm -hmm. So the competitive nature of the marketplace, mm -hmm. more patient responsibility is good things. Ryan, what gives you hope this week? Um, you know, I agree with that. Uh, there are these leaked tapes for the Republican meeting, and there was serious talk about the Affordable Care Act, um, you know, keeping the pre-existing condition uh, uh, protections in place. Um, you know, making sure kids can stay on their parents' insurance until they're 26. Mm -hmm. So I think what you're going to see is a public-facing death of the Affordable Care Act, mm -hmm. satisfy certain political needs. Mm -hmm. For the parts of Obamacare that are working, I think most of those will survive. With some tweaks like Joe mentioned, I think it will improve the overall system. Okay. On the other side of the coin, Joe, what, what still gives you concern about this, this transition? Well, I think it's the uh, chaos and the alarm and, and the uncertainty that's out there. And I, I, I don't think anybody appreciates the uncertainty. It's wasted energy. And I'd just like to get beyond that. Mm -hmm. So it'd be good to get some communication out there about what's coming out. Ryan, what, what still gives you concern? Uh, I agree with that. Um, you know, there's so much chaos right now, not just in the healthcare market, but just politically. Mm -hmm. I think it's hard for the messages to break out of that chaos. Mm -hmm. So all the stakeholders know what's going to happen with the Affordable Care Act, mm -hmm. what's going to happen with you know policies affecting really almost any industry. Mm -hmm. There's just so much chaos in the market right now. I think mm -hmm. it's hard for people to understand what's going to come out of this administration. Mm -hmm. and when. Okay. Um, of all the issues being discussed, what's, what's not being discussed this week, Joe, that you think should be on the table? What should we really be talking about? Well, I think there's a lot of things, but one thing I haven't seen too much notification news on is um, the removal of health care as a tax-free benefit. And uh, I think that has repercussions that we don't fully understand the effect. But I can see health care... Uh, being more like a 401k or that benefit being eliminated mm -hmm. for employees, mm -hmm. or at least they're going to have to pay taxes on it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, as a society, we, a, a lot of people haven't been purchasing health insurance. Mm -hmm. Are they going to be informed? You know, do they, I mean, purchasing insurance is complex mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if, our, if we're ready to do that. So one of the issues Joe's interested in is, is, is tax implications. What, what, from your perspective, is not being spoken about that you think we should be speaking about? Uh, I agree with Joe on that point. Um, also, just the timing of when these changes will take place. This gets back to the uncertainty in the market. I think all the stakeholders want to know when decisions mm -hmm. will be made, when they'll be communicated, mm -hmm. uh, so they can make decisions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's switch perspectives a little bit. What about uh, perspectives from an executive position? Be you an executive within the healthcare um, industry or an executive in the corporate world. What should be top of your agenda as an executive? What should you be thinking about this week with regard to uh, healthcare? One item would be um, not to get lost in the excitement, right? I was talking to some <clears throat> individuals and they, they use the, uh, the term, we should have a strong ignore button and, and not get too carried up, carried away with everything mm -hmm. that's going on. But I think the basic premise of the marketplace is the same. How do I reduce health care costs and keep 
keep calm and carry mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. right? Keep calm and carry on. Now voice your opinion if you mm -hmm. disagree with some things from an administrative perspective. But um, how do you reduce your health care costs? Mm -hmm. That's still a central question for Joe, for you, for you what, what from an executive perspective should they be thinking about? Yeah, I mean, some of the primary things won't change, as Joe just mentioned. Focus on reducing costs, improving quality. That's here to stay. Mm -hmm. Use of technology, the use of data, mm -hmm. that, that's here to stay. Um, I would encourage executives to talk to their government relations team mm -hmm. uh, to try to get a better sense of what's happening at the state level, mm -hmm. also at the federal level. Um, lots of conversations to help develop a strategy, but stay calm, stay the course, mm -hmm. and focus on the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. yeah. Quality, reduce costs, use data, invest in technology. Um, last question we like to, to, to ask our guest is step back a little bit to, uh, to the long term. What's, what's your big idea, your big idea um, that particularly interests you in, in that could really transform healthcare or make a big change to healthcare? Can I have two? You can have two, <laughs> All right. as I, long as they're quick. <laughs> I, you know, the first one I believe is, uh, you know, the merging of this consumerism and technology. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think we're on moving towards and where the coming together of those two things has me pretty excited. Mm -hmm. um, online chronic pain management, mm -hmm. online mental health issues. So big issues for healthcare, right? And technology coming in there to be a solution or a partial solution mm -hmm. is, is pretty exciting. Um, two, and, and probably a little bit Minnesota-centric, mm -hmm. is can our healthcare systems work together collectively to solve some of these issues? Mm -hmm. Ryan, what big idea? What's the big idea that you think is so, fascinating at so, the center? Yeah, so I agree the this the combination of consumerism and technology, you know, online health, mm -hmm. um, twenty four seven wherever you are, supported by data. My big idea is having the federal government try to get more involved to make it easier to operate a business across the U.S. Every state has their own set of laws for mm -hmm. licensure. How do you establish a patient relationship? Mm -hmm. How to use this technology? We have to reduce those burdens, those regulatory burdens, mm -hmm. to make it easier for this online convenient mm -hmm. care. Okay, well, thank you very much uh, for your conversation and our, uh, our eight minute update. Uh, and thank you for watching, and we look forward to uh, having two more guests uh, next week. Thank you.